What's up guys, in this video I want to present the power of the bevel shader in Blender. A lot of people have asked about this, so I'll do a quick and easy video on how powerful this thing is. So let's say I had a sphere in here, we'll run a quad sphere if you don't have this option. Uh, you have to have mesh machine for this one. If you don't have it, you can just add in a cube, subdivide it, and run a cast modifier to get a perfect sphere. Anyways, when we run a quad sphere, we're just going to have this basically. So if we want to, you know, run a boolean cut in here, maybe I'll come in with a cube. We'll scale this guy up on the Y, scale it down a bit, move it over, and let's go ahead and bevel these edges right here. Give it maybe like 20 segments or so, so it's nice and dense. Uh, we'll go ahead and shade smooth the cutter. Auto smooth, shade smooth the sphere, and then auto smooth that. What I'm going to go ahead and do is run a difference boolean like this. To run a difference boolean, all you have to do is turn on the bool tool add-on or hard ops and then press control minus on the numpad. I'll do it again for any beginners out there. Control minus on the numpad and there we go, we have a difference boolean. Now the main issue when we do this is we have a lot of artifacts and shading errors that occur. So I also have some bad errors in the middle here and that's probably because my auto smooth angle is too high. We'll do like 30. And that should be okay. And we can also come to the cutter itself and run some loop cuts through the cutter. And that should help clean up the shading a bit as well because it's going to force geometry uh, onto this object as you can see. So this is all fine and looks good, but the issue, if I were to go into matte cap so you can see it, you're gonna see we have a bad, bad shading around the corners simply because if we take a look, we have n-gons and triangles, which is causing these really bad shading stretches, as you can see if we kind of go around. So to clean these shading errors up, all we need to do is increase the resolution of this sphere. If we go into wireframe, you can see this guy is relatively low poly, uh, not too good if we want to have good shading. So as you can see here, the shading is able to stretch all the way out to these points. So what we need to do is come in and add a subdivision surface modifier, maybe put this up to like 2, and you're going to see it's going to collapse the boolean, so make sure the subsurf is above the boolean so it doesn't affect it. It's only going to affect this um, base of the sphere. Let's turn off optimal display, and you're going to see this is the new resolution after we use the subsurf. So what's happening is um, the shading is going to be a lot less apparent. It's going to be more pushed in to these corners. So if I turn off the wireframe, you can see the shading is pretty much perfect unless we really zoomed in you might be able to catch a few issues, but honestly, not really. So what we can do now is add our bevel, as always, and hard surface. We want to have a bevel to pick up the nice reflections around the edges. So we're going to add a bevel modifier in here. And generally what we do is we come in here and change the limit method over to angle to base the bevels off the angle so it doesn't bevel everything. Change the shading, turn on hard and normals for nicer shading. Uh, under geometry, clamp overlap should be turned off, and maybe like three segments or so should be enough, and we'll just make this a really, really small amount of bevel. And you're going to see this is where a lot of the issues come into play. We have a lot of artifacts going on. So generally, we'd be going in here and applying the subsurf and the boolean, and you know, coming in, this might be a bit too dense for the example, so in general, you'd probably have something a little bit more realistic like this amount. Um, and you just have to go in and clean up the artifacts, meaning you'd have to pretty much move the vertices out of the way of the bevel. And you could use this with a Boolean cleanup or just slide these manually, but most of the time it's a pain. So instead of doing this, what we could do is simply use a bevel uh, shader, which is going to be on the rendering level and not on the uh, geometry level, on the physical level. So I'm going to go ahead and just undo these effects. We'll leave these on. So I'm going to turn off the bevel right here. We'll just turn that guy off. We're going to go ahead and go into rendered view. Maybe make a nice metallic material in here. We could just um, new material, make it metallic, make the roughness lower, and make the base color a bit darker. So now we essentially have this. So if we go into our shader editor and go to object, all we have to do is press shift A, go to input, bevel, we're going to drop the normal into the normal like that, and now you're going to see we have a bevel on the rendering level. And this is perfect because we don't have to deal with artifacts now. We can come in and, yeah, the artifacts are basically non-existent because the geometry isn't being affected. It's simply a rendering effect. So as you can see, 
Looks like we have a bevel. In reality, all it's really doing is applying a shadow that makes it look like a bevel if we were to increase the radius. You can see now it does not look like a bevel, it just looks like a shadow. So this is kind of faking the idea of a bevel. So usually we pull this in and it looks like a bevel is there even though it's really not. So I generally don't use the bevel shader because one, it's a lot less versatile. I don't have control over angles and um, segment counts, weight limit methods, things like that. And on a more complex mesh, I simply need more control with my physical bevels via the bevel modifier. But in some situations, you can get away with this and actually have a super clean mesh, no issues at all in like a minute's time because you don't have to clean up the geo after you run the boolean. So just thought I'd present this. This idea actually came from one of Jerry's more recent videos. I'll put it on the overlay right now uh, and link it in the description. He made a really cool video on making this uh, cylindrical piece using subsurf as well as bevel. And he gave me the idea of using a bevel shader to kind of speed up the process. So take a look at that video. That's all I wanted to show here. thought it'd be pretty useful to some of you and save you quite a bit of time. So that's about it for this video. I just wanted to quickly present the bevel shader. Like I said, most of the time I use the modifier simply because I have more control and the bevel shader is basically for quick sketches most of the time, for me at least. So hopefully you can make use of this and I'll see you in the next video.